Hello everyone. I am going to be covering with you the hiring a student employee process. Um, there have been many changes recently that are coming into effect fall 2016 and this presentation is going to cover the ins and outs of those. So let's get into it. For this presentation we are going to be covering five basic steps to hiring a student employee. Step one, we are going to discuss student employment at Goucher and all the changes and ins and outs policy wise. Step two, we are going to go through understanding your student wage budgets. Step three, we are going to discuss the student employment position and approval and posting piece. And step four, we're going to talk through the documents required to hire your students. And step five, uh, we are going to go through paying students. So step one, understanding student employment at Goucher. So in order to understand student employment at Goucher, it's very important to understand the mission of student employment as well as our overall goals for the changes that are coming into effect fall 2016. Um, and this first point here, this is our mission for student employment. And it is truly to provide student employees with opportunities that enable them to develop and refine relevant, transferable, and diverse skill sets that they can then utilize upon graduation when entering the workforce. Um, and the second two points are our goals for student employment. We certainly want to provide increased student employment equity and accessibility on campus. And we also want to provide resources and support to you as student supervisors regarding student employment aspects. So the first change that is coming into effect fall 2016 that is um, radically different from what we have previously done student employment wise is we will be instituting the student employment allotments. These allotments are going to set a maximum amount that any student can earn on campus in the academic year and it is dependent on the type of student and there are two types of students moving forward. Um, so all students are going to fall into one of these two categories. The first one is the Goucher Work Program, and their allotment is $2,000. So students are part of the Goucher Work Program if they are not a federal work-study student. Um, the other program, the federal work-study program, is reserved for those students who have been awarded and accepted their student uh, work-study award, and that allotment is eligible to be up to $3,200. Um, there certainly is some variability within there. However, it is not the student supervisor's responsibility whatsoever to know an individual student allotment. Um, we certainly want you to ask your student what their allotment is, and if they don't know, please direct them to the student employment coordinator or the Office of Financial Aid, um, and we can certainly assist them in understanding that. The second change to the program will be the student pay scale. We have restructured it into three levels. And level one is equivalent to minimum wage. Level two is equivalent to minimum wage plus $2. And level three is reserved for stipend paid positions. So moving forward, this pay structure is really skill-based and it will be determined position by position which level as we dissect the required skills for the position. Um, the student employment coordinator determines the level of the position based on the job description you submit to Goucher Recruit. Um, so just take that into account. There is a section um, within the Goucher Recruit posting where you can put in pay. You're certainly welcome to insert level one or level two if you want, just to know that final approval does come from the student employment coordinator. Um, and certainly, in order to know how your position may fall while you're writing the job descriptions, um, is to understand the pay scale criteria. So this is the new pay scale criteria. Um, and level one is really where we're expecting the bulk of all student employment positions to actually fall. And these are really all entry level student positions that do not require previous training or special skills other than those basic computer skills. Duties for these positions are generally pretty routine and do not include any supervisory responsibilities. Um, they require more direct supervision from U.S. student supervisors or other student managers, um, and they come with relatively specific instructions, um, but generally they require minimum and finite on-the-job training. So again, we do expect that the majority of these positions on campus will fall within level one. 
Um, now, level two positions, which are that minimum wage plus two dollars, is those positions that will include a higher level of responsibility and independence. They may have positions where they require extensive on-the-job training or even a specialized credential or certification. Um, a good example of these are lifeguards. So they have to go through certifications in order to be eligible to be a lifeguard. Um, so these students may be responsible for an aspect of a program, supervising other students, etc. Um, and they are required generally to have previous experience of some kind, have highly specialized skills, and or have ongoing training throughout the process. Um, these, some of these duties can include training of students, scheduling of other students, and even supervising of other students. Um, and then level three are stipend criteria positions. These positions are extremely restricted. Currently, we only have less than a handful on campus that even pay in a stipend. Um, if you have questions regarding stipend criteria, please contact the Career Development Office and the Student Employment Coordinator, um, and we can certainly discuss those further with you. So there are um, some key exemptions to keep in mind with the new student employment processes. Um, the first one is that break periods of summer and winter are exempt from the student employment allotments. That means if a student works during winter term or summer break, they can continue to earn money without having to worry about maxing out their allotment because those earnings are exempt from allotments. Um, so that's certainly something to keep in mind. Um, and then the second exemption here is that any student employment position that is compensated via a stipend are for the 2016-2017 year currently e exempt from student employment allotments. So a good example here are the RAs. If a student is working as an RA, they are allowed to earn their specific allotment in addition to their RA stipend. Um, again, that exemption is only due um, to be allowed currently for the 2016-2017 year. So there are two key student employment restrictions to be aware of. Number one is that no student may hold more than one stipend paid position during any academic year. So in order to continue facilitating that equity piece of student employment, um, we have restricted anyone who is holding a stipend position, such as an RA, to only being allowed to be in that one stipend role. So do keep that in mind. It's important for you as supervisors who may pay on a stipend um, that they know that and having those conversations with your students to understand that is very important to this process. Um, and the second restriction is on incremental hourly raises. Um, please note all raises have been eliminated beginning fall 2016. Um, so positions can only be at level one minimum wage or at level two minimum wage plus two dollars. There is no middle ground, no increases, um, none of that will be allowed moving forward. Um, so when you submit your job descriptions to the Student Employment Coordinator via Goucher Recruit and they are leveled, that is the pay for the position, either minimum wage, which is level one, or level two, minimum wage plus two dollars. That is all positions that are hourly will only fall into one of those two categories. So step two here, understanding the student wage budgets. So of course, the first question you need to ask yourself before hiring any students um, is what is your budget? And so if you don't know where your budget is or what your budget is, I certainly encourage you to talk to your supervisor, your budget officer. Uh, maybe they may be one and the same. However, you certainly need to find and locate that individual as that is a key piece of understanding this entire process because you will want to know that number in order to accurately uh, project your hiring and um, hours per week and such. Um, so each division currently has a designated individual who is a budget officer. Um, so again, talking to your leadership to identify that person if you do not know or have access to your budget report. So to understand your student wage budget, you are going to need to first know where to find it. And this is dependent on whether or not you actually have access to it. If you are not aware if you have access or have tried to access it and cannot, uh, you certainly need to connect with your supervisor or budget officer and that information can be provided to you from those resources. 
Um, just an important note there is that not everyone who is a student supervisor will have access to their student employment budgets online. Um, that is a restricted access and certainly you can again contact your supervisor for that information. If you do have access to your budgets and you need to locate those and start preparing, start projecting, you will actually find this on Inside Goucher in the budget to actual report and it is a specific line on that report note that says total student wages uh, and in the next coming slides I will actually uh, take you through that process. Uh, just a note here, effective fall 2016 the reporting of student wages will undergo an important change in that you will only see one line for total student wages. Uh, no more will it break out into what's federal work study, what is not federal work study. That has been eliminated. Student supervisors will only see one total student wage budget and from there you will be able to project your wages, project your hiring amounts um, and see that number updated every two weeks to reflect that. So we have eliminated that step. No need to worry about what's federal work study and what isn't. So let's go through the process of actually finding your budget should you have access to it. Um, up here in the top right hand side you'll see the inside goucher link if you have um, a PC you will be able to click the link directly please note that all the links in the PowerPoint are clickable so you can go directly there however Max seem to be having a um, little bit of an issue there in, re in that it requires you to sign into inside goucher each time just know that all the links here on this PowerPoint are available via Inside Goucher. So if you're on a Mac computer, you will need to go to Inside Goucher directly to find all of these. Um, so here, the first one on the upper left hand side is the main page of Inside Goucher. Uh, what you see there is that first list that comes up faculty and staff departments. So the first line, controllers, office, and business services, you're going to want to click there. The next page that opens up is here on the bottom right and from this menu you're going to want to choose budget reports. So once you click on that last link that says budget reports this page comes up. If you click on the third from last link operating budget to actual report this is where you will access your student wage budgets. Um, again if you have access to it it will automatically open if you do not you will get an error message. Um, if you do not have access please connect with your leadership regarding that information. So once you click on that link, this comes up. This is the operating unit budget to actual report. And at the bottom here, the second to the last one is your student wage line. This is your total student wages for the year as well as your actual amount currently at any one point when you take a look at it. First column is the total budget for the year. Second one here is your actual amount at the time you take a look at it. Please keep, keep in mind that there is a two week delay on the reporting of student wages due to our payroll structure. So that is just something to keep in mind that anytime you come and take a look at it, there is a two week delay. All right, so step three, determining position pay and level. So for position level approval, Please note all departments and supervisors are required to develop and submit job descriptions in Goucher Recruit for any position they employ students within. This is regardless of whether or not you are employing students who are returning to your office from the past year or if you are hiring new students. All positions must have a job description on file in order to be authorized to pay your students. If you do not follow this process, it will result in a delay of your hiring operations. So keep in mind, you submit the job description in Goucher Recruit, the student employment coordinator will approve the position level and then will notify the Office of Payroll through their own processes that you have complied with this policy. And again, we will cover in a separate presentation the process of how to post in Goucher Recruit. Alrighty, so step four, hiring your students. So the first step to hiring your students is understanding the required paperwork for hiring student employees at Goucher. Um, there are several forms that have to be filled out by both you and your student employees in order to be eligible for payroll. 
And so these forms listed here must be submitted to the Office of Human Resources by the student employee themselves in order to be authorized to work on campus. Um, again, these are just for your general understanding. They are not to be submitted by you, but rather are the student's responsibility to complete prior to working uh, in any office on campus. Again, they have to be submitted and authorized before they begin working in your offices. And those forms are the I-9 Employment Eligibility Verification, as well as the W-4 Federal Tax Form and the Maryland MW-507 State Tax Form. Um, these, again, have to be on file before any student begins working on campus. And this is the payroll authorization form. Uh, this must be submitted to the director of payroll before any student begins working. Um, everything on this form must be filled out correctly, otherwise it could result in a delay in paying your students. Please keep that in mind. That's why you should absolutely um, start the hiring process as soon as possible in order to avoid any kinks in the process. Um, this form is extremely valuable. It must include everything from the student's name, their ID number, the approved hourly rate by the student employment coordinator, um, the confidentiality form signed and the FERPA training complete. But this last column here on the right, the account number, this is one of the most important numbers that has to go on this form because those are the account code from which your student wages will be pulled. If you do not know your account number, please contact your supervisor and get that information. It is very, very important um, that that information be obtained and put on this document correctly. So one of the key components of that payroll authorization form and one of the requirements for all student employees is that they complete the FERPA quiz annually. So um, at least once a year, your students are required to complete this quiz. Um, and it can be accessed on the registrar's website. I have the link here, but also if you just go directly to the um, registrar's website, you'll also find it there for those of you using a Mac who may not be able to click this link. So keep that in mind. Um, if you hire a student midway through the year or you're thinking they probably work for another office or you found out they work somewhere else and you think they might have already completed this once during the year, you can certainly contact the student employment coordinator and we can verify that they have or have not completed that quiz. We do have access to that information. This is the confidentiality statement. You can find a blank copy of it on the Student Employment Inside Goucher website. Um, this is for your records and again must be completed annually. Um, you do not have to submit this to anyone but it is a good thing to keep on file for your student employees so that they understand their responsibilities confidentiality wise. So the last piece of hiring process for student employees will be the student employee orientation. It is the responsibility of all student supervisors to provide their student employees with an orientation training to their offices. Um, it's important to include in this orientation a job description that clearly defines their job duties, that you clearly set expectations for their work hours, professionalism, confidentiality, and dress code, that you also provide them with an overall organizational structure of your office. This is very helpful to them um, moving forward in their day-to-day -day operations. And lastly, if possible, pairing the new hire with a peer for on-the-job training or maybe developing a departmental specific training guide for your new hires and or scheduling blocks of time with yourself as their student employment supervisor for training. Paying your student employees is the final step of this PowerPoint. So all students are required to submit timesheets in order to be paid by the college. There are student timesheet responsibilities for all student supervisors and I will list them off here for you. So all student supervisors must ensure and verify that the student timesheet is complete, that they sign their student employees timesheets, and that they submit the student employees timesheets to the Office of Payroll in accordance to the due dates for each pay cycle. The payroll calendar can be found on Inside Goucher. Um, again, you can click this link if you are on a PC. However, if you are a Mac, you can find that on the student employment portal within Inside Goucher. And all student timesheets must include the department name, the account number from which your student wages will be drawn, and the pay period dates. And this is the student payroll timesheet. 
just to give you um, a picture of what it looks like, remembering that this must be filled out in entirety in order to have your student paid. Um, again, it can be found on the student employment portal within Inside Goucher. All right, so we have covered the five steps to hiring a student employee. Now I just want to cover some additional notes and student employment resources that I have discussed throughout this presentation. So the first resource I am going to cover here is the faculty and staff student employment webpage. We did create a website for faculty and staff to access regarding all student employment matters. So everything in this PowerPoint as well as some further resources can be found on this website. Um, the link is here off to the left. And once you come to the page, you're going to actually click on this first accordion, hire a student employee, and from there it will go into uh, the various steps and processes and information regarding student employment. All right. Also, I have covered in this presentation the Inside Goucher portal for student employment. We did create a dedicated student employment website within Inside Goucher. It does house all documents, um, information, trainings, everything you could possibly need for student employment is housed on that one-stop shop there within Inside Goucher. And lastly, there are some additional notes I want to cover. So really, um, one of the very important questions I often get regarding the student employment changes is the monitoring of student employment allotments. It is not the responsibility of any student supervisor to monitor student allotments. That is a responsibility that we are trying to um, reside mainly with the student employees themselves and there will be some various changes to ensure they have access to that information, but mainly student employment allotments are going to be monitored by the student employment coordinator in conjunction with the director of payroll. Um, for your purposes and understanding your specific student employees and their allotments, uh, there are two emails that will go out regarding allotments. The first email will notify both the student supervisor and the student employee themselves that they are within $200 of their allotment maximum. The second email will notify both parties when a student employee has maxed their allotment out and because at, at this point they will be terminated from payroll and unable to continue working on campus. This is why it is very important to understand your student wages as well as having the students understand their allotments and be informed so that when scheduling students they understand how often they can work in order to either spread that allotment out throughout the entire year should they. Um, if they are working multiple jobs there's the potential to actually max out their allotment very quickly. And so these are the conversations we're hoping to facilitate um, regarding allotments and student employment as a whole. Alrighty, so that wraps up this presentation. Uh, we really appreciate everybody's participation and support of these changes. Everybody has been wonderful so far. We saw a lot of positions become posted very early on, so thank you for that. We certainly want to encourage everyone to continue submitting any questions and feedback. Uh, regarding student employment matters. We find this feedback and questions extremely valuable to the process moving forward um, because we are continuing to improve this pro program as a whole. So certainly continue to submit those questions, any feedback as it comes about. And we have set up a specific email for student employment. It is studentemployment at goucher.edu. This is really the first stop where you can um, connect with us on any student employment matter. Um, and student employment is housed within the Career Development Office. We are in Van Meter 117. So certainly feel free to stop on by or make an appointment. Um, you can certainly divert your students here as well with any of their questions. All right. Thanks, everyone.